So good afternoon, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us today. We're absolutely delighted to have you with us. I'm Anuradha Sant, your host for today. We welcome you to this webinar, which has been hosted by the Coaches for You community, which are a bunch of volunteer coaches from ICF India chapters. This webinar presentation today will last for 30 minutes, followed by a 15 minute Q&A. During the webinar, you're free to write in your questions and comments in the chat box. However, we will request you to keep your mics on mute. Uh, and also, if, you po if possible, keep your videos on videos off camera to prevent any bandwidth issues during the webinar. As I've requested you, if you could also uh, fill in your uh, name, where you're calling in from and what is it that you do in the chat box and also grab a pen and paper, which you may require during the session. We will also be having a small feedback poll at the end of the session, and we would request you to fill that in as well, because your feedback is extremely important for us to improve our offerings going forward. So the topic for today's webinar is resilience and you. And to take us to this, is our experienced coach, Anil Bhagwati, who's based out of Mumbai. Anil is an executive coach who balances business and personal complexities and the changing environment with individual needs. Helps create clarity and focus on achieving one's personal and professional growth and learning using a holistic approach. She's passionate, passionate about working with women to support and accelerate their journey in building a stronger and a more resilient individual. Today, we are quite curious to know about resilience, what it means and how is it useful for us. So let's go ahead and explore this. And without wasting another moment, I would like to hand this over to Anal to take us through this journey today. So over to you, Anal. Thanks, Anuradha. Thank you, everybody, for being here today. I can see a lot of numbers popping up, some familiar, some not, from all over the world. And so I thank each one of you. You know, when I was working to put together my ideas and thoughts for this webinar, you know, I realized that the last time I had a sense of normalcy or I had a normal day was actually the day before the band happened here in India. And that day, I didn't, like all of us, didn't realize how quickly the changes that we would all face, not being able to go outside, not seeing what was familiar, not being able to even call up that friend and say, hey, let's meet for coffee, not going to work the usual way we would, having our children or whoever around us doing what they were normally doing, right? And today, we've been in this lockdown for almost 40 or more days. Some of us started off very enthusiastic, all positive about wanting to do this and that and happy that we had a little time to ourselves. But as time has gone by, you know, 40 days into it is no laughing matter. Some of us are slowly flagging, slowly slowing down in this middle of this big race. Our enthusiasm's changing, our mindset is changing, energies, Emotions, thoughts, feelings, they've all been going through like the ringer, right? Now, what's happened is we are still facing and being bombarded with the same amount, if not more, of information. It has probably changed, but we are hearing more and more from around the world. We are seeing what leaders are doing. But at the same time, we are also hearing from the person on the street, we're hearing about the migrant workers in India walking to, a, walking to go back home or coming to the Bandra train stations. We are hearing from businesses who are saying, look, this is not physically, financially secure for us. We are not going to be able to either reopen or we are going to really face a lot of struggles coming in our way. So with all of this, all of this situation, each one of us is battling an unknown. We are reaching out not only to our friends and to our family, but we are getting online with webinars, with anything that we feel can give us a bit of solace and something that we can take forward, right? 
because this pandemic is not of our making. It's something that's forced onto us. So then what happens now? What do we do next? How do we keep continuing with ourselves, with our emotions, the habits that we've had, the routines that we have set, our commitments to ourselves, to others around us? What do we do? How do we continue forward? And for some of us who like to be in control, this is extremely difficult because your anxiety is increasing day by day. Your enthusiasm is reducing, your stress is increasing, and it's impacting what we need to get done. So thinking about that, are we so right now focused on running this marathon during this lockdown, winning this game of being inside, that we forget that we have to or we need to start with building our stamina first. We cannot run if we've not learned to walk. And the walking patterns have changed in these 40 days. So no matter what you're doing or where you are right now, the first step to building resilience is recognizing, acknowledging, and accepting that this is an unusual circumstance and that what worked for us in the past may or may not work for us today or tomorrow. This is one where we have limited control. But what is it that we actually have some control over, right? So I'm going to talk about two things today. One, taking a look at our emotions, identifying them, recognizing them, and using that recognition to find a way to regulate ourselves. And secondly, focusing on ways that we can build our resilience, focusing on ways that we as this community of I'm seeing 84 people can maybe help each other with some thoughts, some ideas that you will at a point put into your chat box. Keep in mind, and I'm going to take a second to switch over to the presentation. Keep in mind that there is nothing like one size fits all. And that there is nothing like one size fits all. We each of us come from a different place, from a different reality, facing an unusual situation today. What happens in my home is not the same in somebody else's, nor in the third person. So keeping all of this, let's hope that at the end of this session, we can find one thought, one idea, one way of supporting each other, taking back with us. Then I'd say more power to us. So in your chat box, I'll request everyone to please put their mics on mute so that it doesn't disturb Anal while she's presenting. Thank you so much. So open up the chat box and in there, without too much thought, don't overthink, write in the emotion that comes to mind during this lockdown period. Just go, okay? Wow. So there's tired, struggle, relaxed, anxiety, breathing deep, relaxed, apprehension, uncertainty, want normal, gratitude, uncertainty. Wow, it's scrolling so fast, I can't read. Frustration, uncertainty again, unsure, freedom, pressure of work from home, deeply relaxed, wow. Uh, acceptance, all of the above, designed, overwhelming. So there's a lot. Wow. And when you're wow. listening to it, to me, it's like this emotional roller coaster. Each one of us has our own roller coaster. And at this point, it sounds to me and it feels to me that this roller coaster has already started. It's in motion. And what's happened is many of us have not been able to strap on that seatbelt that would actually keep us in place. And 
each one of us has our own emotional roller coaster not knowing whether mine is at the top of the hill coming slowly down or yours is already gained momentum going downhill and into a loop so wherever we may be in our roller coaster what is this emotion that we are feeling i'm going to introduce you to the wheel of emotions okay this is devised put together by robert plutchik who was a psychologist and a university professor he created this wheel to illustrate different emotions and to show how they are related to each other so what this wheel does is it arranges the emotions in concentric circles with the inner circles more basic and the outer circles more complex what he does is he states that there are eight primary emotions so the arrow points at anger but that inner that mid concentric circle is the is what he says are the eight primary or base emotions joy trust fear surprise sadness anticipation anger and disgust and these can all be traced to what i think we feel at a base level within us no matter how complex or different our feelings are right what this emotion this wheel also does is it shows you a relation to each other if you notice if you're looking at it closely you will see that each emotion has a spectrum or a range or an intensity at the same time the base emotions also have a polar opposite and they have the ones next to them the petals have another petal adjacent so the polar opposites are let's say anger and fear joy versus sadness and which in many ways without our realization turn into the other so as our emotions evolve and grow stronger or even weaker what happens is it changes and that is where you see the intensity so i'll give you an example anger can begin with annoyance and could end up in rage or could end up starting at rage and slowly move downwards or towards the more lower spectrum of the emotion feeling into annoyance look at another one let's look at disgust boredom and loathing right it can easily go from one end to the other a simple dislike becomes some sort or some form of hatred two different feelings but with the same root emotion at the same time you can combine two of these emotions anticipation let's say and joy the slightly orange and the yellow combine those two petals and you end up with optimism and the polar opposite is disapproval the same let's say for joy and trust the yellow and the green light green combine them and you feel love polar opposite is your remorse so knowing more about our emotions what it does it it helps us to get a little more clarity a little more awareness and to avoid being blindsided by our feelings and that is one of the main reasons why i have put this or i'm introducing this wheel of emotions to you and for some of you who may understand the power of color you will see that this model makes connections between the emotion circle what we have as well as the color wheel if you painted your house you might have seen this and you might have realized okay maybe i don't want the red in my bedroom or i might go with a lighter shade and there is a distinct relationship so the eight basic emotions your anger anticipation joy and so on are marked with specific colors and then you see the variations of shade the lighter as you go outside towards the end of the petal darker as you go to the middle of the circle 
think about your own feelings, what you put down in there. Where do you think you are in this uh, circle? Are, you, are your feelings right now highly intensified? Can you find or see a way to being at a lighter color? See, our emotions are something that only we feel inside. And until we know what it is, bringing clarity to it, which is sometimes so overwhelming that we don't even consider this, this wheel can actually be an amazing place to start. It's a very simple model, so please use it. So now you'd say, okay, fine, I'm seeing this wheel. What do I do with all of my emotions? What do I do with all of this? So do we know where our emotion has stemmed from? Where is it coming from? Are you able to pin that down? Perhaps, perhaps not. Sometimes we get into an emotion so quickly, we don't really think about it. It could be something that happened five minutes ago, or it could be like a volcano simmering inside of you and suddenly it just erupts. The one thing that we do have control over during this lockdown is our self, some level of our emotions, our words, our thoughts, and our reactions. So how do we, like this roller coaster, get the seatbelt on so that we are safe? We can create a new familiarity within ourselves or find a level playing field. Now the model you'll see is a modified version of many that are around. This exercise that I'm going to walk you through is something that I have adapted because this is what has worked for me. You may have seen it in cognitive behavior theories. You may have seen it in um, psychology for those who have studied, or if you've studied or read about emotional intelligence. Use it, modify it, and see where you can find the value. The example I'm giving is also something that just happened to me a few days ago. My son walks in, he's 15 years old. He walks into where I was sitting in my study, working on something. And he asked me a question and I blew up. I was angry with what he asked. And before you knew it, we were shouting at each other. He walks out, slams the door. I get up from where I am, extremely upset, extremely irritated and annoyed and angry because I couldn't complete what I was doing. I reacted. And that reaction came at a later point when I evaluated myself and I said, what happened? I realized that because for me, he needed to be at school. He shouldn't have been coming to ask me for things not realizing that perhaps he was in a different place. Maybe it was a break between his classes or he needed a mental uh, time out. Any of that could have happened. But my reaction came from, came instantly without any thinking. And I realized when I introspected a bit that I was tired, I was tired of planning meals, I was tired of ordering groceries, I wanted to get a little work done, I was putting things away. Um, I had my own emotions that I was trying to balance and I wasn't ready to balance his. What that led to was the fact that it Im impacted my body, it impacted my mind. I was annoyed, I was at where that uh, where the red we were at, you know, we were, I was angry. And before I could go into a rage, I got up, but I was easily moved and swayed between annoyance, anger, and rage. And that is one of the reasons why I wanted to introduce the wheel of emotion to you. How quickly we go from the emotion we are feeling at that minute to increasing that in its uh, intensity. But to be able to use something like this exercise to take a step back and to go from regulation or uh, recognition of that emotion to regulating it is huge. And I'll tell you what happened. 
when we start recognizing, when we start labeling our emotion, we understand which, what it is. What we do is we automatically reduce the impact that emotion has on us. We, we move from the higher intensity to a much lower or in some cases we go from a lower to a higher very quickly because we are reacting. Recognizing labeling allows us to detach, to create this little separation between us, to create that little boundary and to observe it like we would under a microscope. Maybe not the right uh, analogy right now, but that's what it is. We are taking a step back, we are detaching. And what happens is I was able to diffuse it at a later stage and I voiced it. And the minute I voiced it, I introspected, I looked and tried to figure out why I was angry, it reduced the impact it had on me. And I automatically started feeling like, uh-uh, that wasn't good. So I try and use this, and you can use something similar to this. Try it. And use the wheel, because that's very useful, very valuable, to help you identify what it is that you're actually feeling. What does this picture represent to you? What do you see in this? Type in if you would like. Anuradha, any thoughts there? Yeah. They come in and they come fast. So determination, man in a hurry, constraints, restrain, tied down unwillingly, breaking free of constraints, trying hard, breaking free of emotional triggers, too many things tied up, resilience, tied down, running away from problems, trying to break shackles, Man tied to every emotion, running towards goals, turning to move ahead, moving forward but can't move, being pulled from different directions and constantly moving forward. Too many things. Yeah, lots of it. Emotions holding. The, uh, can I request? Yes, thanks so much. Uh, I was just asking everybody to go on mute. Thank you. Trying to break negativity, rush to achieve things in a hurry, held back, resisting conflicting actions, trying to break free. So there is a pattern, there's a similarity to what all of you are seeing and what I'm seeing. This person moving, battling forward, trying to gain some ground, trying to struggle, struggling to stand upright, trying to push away and move, even though these ropes, these ideas, these thoughts, these feelings are all binding him and pulling him backward. I heard somebody also write in resilience. Tell me what you mean by this word. What, do you, what does it mean to you when you hear the word resilience? Or when you read the poster saying resilience and you, what crossed your mind? What's the first thing that comes to your mind when you hear the word resilience? So just write it, write anything that comes to your mind in the chat box. There's some here, emotional immunity, standing power, ability to bounce back in the face of adversity, strength, adaptability, Hang in there, inner strength, yes. ability to sustain through difficult times, capacity to recover, ability to handle things with equanimity and calm, ability to cope. And it is. So this, is a, this has Latin roots, the word resilience. Yeah, it's breaking back, being flexible. Emotional strength. and it means to leap back or recoil. Yeah. Leap back. yeah, 
So many of you have hit the nail on the head. Resilience is our ability to recover, to adjust from a trauma, from a stress, but it is not our ability to never be impacted by it. So for those who are working, like that picture before us, shall we do a quick uh, check as to where we are with our own resilience? So this is where I'd like you to pull your paper and pencil out. The brief resilience scale or the BRS is a very simple six statement scale. And what it does is it assesses our ability to bounce back or recover from stress. It can be used at multiple points in time. So what I would like you to do is on the sheet of paper or anywhere, just scribble, write down the numbers one to six because these are going to be your six statements. And the rating goes from one to five, one being strongly disagree to five being strongly agree. What I'm going to do is I'm going to read out each of these statements and against the number, put your rating. All right, let's begin. Statement one, I tend to bounce back quickly after hard times. Statement two, I have a hard time making it through stressful events. Statement three, it does not take me long to recover from a stressful event. Statement four, it is hard for me to snap back when something bad happens. Statement five, I usually come through difficult times with little trouble. And statement six, I tend to take a long time to get over setbacks in my life. All right, all done. Okay, so now let's begin scoring ourselves. What I want you to do, I'm sorry, is everybody seeing this little scribble on my screen or is it only me? I think somebody has the annotations on and they are scribbling on the screen. So I'd request if you could avoid that and take a pen and paper to do so. Thanks, because I was wondering what I did on my... Uh... No, no, no. That, that's that's uh, another feature called annotations. So you could okay. actually make uh, notes on the uh, presentation, but that's for self. It should ideally not get displayed like this. All right. We'll be all learning new things about technology today. All right. So what I would like you to do is your statement one, three and five. These three statements, if you have rated yourself, let's say for statement one, I tend to bounce back quickly after hard times. If you have rated yourself disagree, that's a rating of a two. That automatically becomes your score. If you've rated yourself three neutral, make your score a three. And this is for statements one, three and five. So for all odd number statements, your rating is your actual score. Correct. Okay. Correct. Now for statements two, four and six, your evens, you're going to flip your rating and that will be your score. So for example, I have a hard time making it through stressful times. If I have rated myself, I agree, which is a four, my rating will be a two. For a rating of five, my score will be a one. Okay, I'm going to repeat. For a score, for a rating of one, my score will be a five. 
for a rating of two, my score will be a four, and my rating of three, my score will be a three. And this is for statement two, statement four, and statement six. And once you've got all your scorings there, add it up. Right? So what does this really mean for us? How resilient I am or am I in this situation? So if you were less than 18, what that means is that your resilience at this point is low. You might be struggling with the changes around you. You might be struggling with the reality that's facing you. There may be a little more of the emotion pendulum here. But there's room to grow. And there's always an outlet, a support that you can find to build resilience. Those between an 18 and 22, you have a normal degree of resilience within you. You can create the change. You can recover from the challenges that come through you. When you're feeling low, you can make changes. And those at 22, uh, 24 and 30, I know there's a 23. You can be either ways on the cusp. You are highly resilient as an individual. And you are able to not only bounce back and thrive, but you are somewhat of a self-starter. So this situation, you're easily able to recover from it and move forward. So before any of you feel, oh my God, you know, my score is low or my score is high, keep in mind that resilience and this scoring, these are not set in stone. They are not static. They change as time goes by, okay? These are also highly situational and contextual. My situation is different from yours. I am living alone with my son, with my husband in Bangalore, while I have friends whose both the kids are home, but they also have an elder parent at home. They have, there are some who, have a, who has a child in the US and is dealing with things here trying to figure out what's going on. And there are friends who are single and living alone. So depending on where you are, what your situation is, what your current reality is, regardless of the fact that we are all facing the same situation from the outside, our context, our situation changes. And as a result, our resilience changes. So whereas my resilience may have been high to begin with, I might fluctuate between a low and a normal and a high at all points in time. Keep in mind, you know, none of us really anticipated the extent of this global outreach of this virus. We've all faced um, heavy rains in Mumbai or heavy snows in the US somewhere in the north. We've struggled with it at a smaller level, but this is across the board. It's impacting each and every one of us, regardless of where we are. And the decisions that were made or that followed as a result are hard. Today, there are so many working from home. There are people being laid off. There are financial considerations to make. We have pressure about a job. We may be working from home, but the work doesn't stop and it probably increases. Because suddenly people think your commute is gone, but you have more that you're dealing with. So this lack of control can change how you are or where you are on this resilience scale. So this exercise was just a way for us to see what aspects we can continue to build on, what aspects we need to focus on. And so you'd say, okay, so where is resilience in all of this? It's like this balancing act, okay? Our life is playing right now. We are the fulcrum of the seesaw. Our life is that beam. And the stressors that we are facing, this external pressures or even somewhat internal pressures are pushing this heavy weight down on this beam, pushing it downward. Whereas the resources that we have with us that we normally in the past relied on continue trying to find that balance of our life. We spoke about recognition, we spoke briefly about regulation, and a little bit just touched upon where we are with our resilience. All of that is part of what's inside of, inside this fulcrum. 
So another, Rizil, another quick time check. Uh, yes. So yeah, we we kind of running yes. out of time. Yeah, thanks. So there are multiple models of resilience. The one I'm talking about today are the three pillars: psychological, physiological, and sociological. Layman's terms: mind, body, and soul. And what does that mean? Mind is. our ability to effectively cope with the mental stressors and challenges we face today our attention to our needs to our feelings because our minds our thoughts our feelings control our energy and our emotions physiological or the body is our ability to adopt and sustain healthy behaviors the exercise we do the physical movement the food we put into our body eating healthy and recognizing the strong connection between the mind and the body the sociological is the ability to network the ability for us to look back into our beliefs our values our strengths and use them at this stage the social connections are very critical and i'll tell you why because right now this pillar the sociological pillar is extremely critical in my opinion it's more important that we focus on it than the mind and the body not to say that you don't but more focus on this the reason being we been told social distancing which actually translates into physical distancing but a lot of us who are in who are extroverts need to meet people to retain that energy the passion within us and those who are introverts are actually at a bit of an advantage where they can reach out and say okay what can i do to help you to support you we are so socially distanced today that this pillar continually needs to be worked on because that is where the mind gets impacted but that is where we find our energy for the body to regularly monitor our stamina to push ourselves i'm going to read a statement out to you elliot friedman is a resiliency researcher and he says the availability of social support in all its forms be it instrumental support or emotional support support with how you think about things they all matter and help us in facing challenges so what are some of the things that we can do start writing typing it up in the chat box how can you or how have you strengthened each of these pillars and i'm going to put up things that have worked for me and also some extra examples so one of the things to build my social self or to ensure that i am not socially distant from everybody is trying to call my father twice on a video call whether there's anything to talk about or not but just for him to see us and for us to see him trying to do the same with my friends we have a family uh, zoom chat sunday nights I'm watching a new show on uh, Amazon. I'm hooked on to this online app called Cultfit. There are more suggestions here. There's more things that you can do. And why did I emphasize on the social aspect? Because at this point, this pillar that needs to be strengthened the most social connections basically with others help us widen our perception help us create more awareness within us and help us to grow character where we need it the most and it helps us reach out to even that one person who can put a smile on our face who can say something that will immediately bring us out of our funk into something more delightful so as we end one of the things that came up in our uh, family um, zoom chat was the serenity prayer many of you know it this has helped me a lot i'm going to just say it grant me the serenity to accept the things that i cannot change the courage to change the things i can and the wisdom to know the difference so some of the words here 
have become a daily touchstone for me. The words serenity, acceptance, courage, change, and wisdom. I'm going to leave you with two things. The first is the two lines that follow this prayer, which have resonated with me, and I want to share them here. Living one day at a time, enjoying one moment at a time. And second, if each of you could walk away with one thing that you have learned or you have shared or something new that you could incorporate into your lives, I'd be really grateful. Thank you all again for being here. I appreciate that you took time out of whatever it is that you were doing. And Anuradha, it's, up, no, uh, it's all over to you. Thanks so much, Anil. That was really, really engaging. Uh, as we're drawing to a close uh, and as you're putting in your thoughts in the chat box, I would also like you to uh, quickly attempt our feedback poll. It will not take you more than 10 seconds to do so. So I'm launching the poll here and it's very important that you um, answer this for us because that would, that's extremely important for us to view your comments so that we could improve our future offerings for you. So the poll is up there. I would request you to all uh, quickly uh, check your answers there and give us your inputs. And as you're doing that, I would like to say that we have our new website for Coaches for You, which is up and running, which is www.coachesforyou.in. You could register for all our future webinars under the events tab there. The next webinar is on 1st of May, which Anal has very nicely put up. Uh, it's at 4 p.m., which is about tackling anxiety and exercising our choice. Our website also has a, a host of other resources and facilities. Uh, you may want to read some of the articles and blogs. You may register for a coaching session, which is completely free, and you would be serviced by some of our most experienced coaches. And you could also be a volunteer coach in case you are one. And there are a lot more offerings. So I would suggest if you could log into our website, I'll repeat www.coachesforyou.in and you could take benefit of all these services free of cost. And if you have any questions or comments, please write them in the chat box. And if we have a minute to spare, uh, I could have Anil wait for another couple of minutes and we could have her answer those for you. Uh, Anil, there was a request from uh, Vicky asking for you to put up the, uh, the resilience definition slide. But I think subsequently we ha I saw there's another person within the group also helped him with that. So, so Vicky, if that need has been met, is there any other question anyone has? Uh, I will be happy to pass that on to Anil so that she could answer those for you. I see a lot of thank yous, a lot of gratitude, Anil. Uh, I see uh, people really have enjoyed your session and the great amount of takeaways, uh, enriching session. And I, I think a whole load of thank yous that I could read. I don't see a, a question really, but it was uh, a comment from Prema said that it was very much needed at this point of situation. So I think very well done, Anil. Thanks you so much. Uh, yes, indeed useful. Can we get the video of this session? Yes, so, so we have recorded this session. And within a few days, we will also have the recording available at our website. So uh, keep tuned. Okay, there's a question as well. So Anil, if you have a couple of minutes and if people are willing to wait, would you want to take this on? So uh, the question is from Shweta. She says, what is the hardest for you to practice in terms of building resilience? 
So for me personally, the hardest has been the social aspect. Um, my situation is such that I have no adult around me. And while I'm fine for maybe two weeks at a time, after 40 days, it's a little unnerving. Because at that point, how much can you talk to a 15 year old who really doesn't want to see you or who wants to do his own thing? And that I think has been the hardest. And that's why I have actually started reaching out to so many more of my friends and even within the family, because it makes, it keeps me a little more balanced. And I will tell you that the biggest thing that has worked for me is being in, engaged with these coaches for you, giving back, being involved, looking at other people rather than looking at me, I think has helped me in terms of building the resilience. So there's another quick question. Uh, I think this could be the parting question. So recognition of emotion and reaction. How do how to cope with this? Recognizing recognition of emotion and reaction. So I think I think what Lata trying to say is that how do you recognize the difference between the emotion and the reaction? And then how do you cope with it? So it's not very easy. And even though I try and take a step back, every time I can feel the change in my body when I'm reacting, I know that it's instant. I know I haven't stopped to think. It's not very easy. It's not very simple about it, right? Because how often are we in the middle of something, thinking about something, and suddenly we translate it into what we've said or what we've done? And how do you take it then into, uh, you said was... Uh, okay, she has, she has added, added uh, ex uh, further to the question. She says, because the time between the emotion and the reaction is very less. It is. So how do you react? Yeah. So so there's a split. Sometimes there's a split second between uh, your reaction, the emotion, and the emotion that you feel, and the reaction that you have. So because the time is so less between the two, how do you cope with it? How do you cope? Yeah. I struggle, but I've seen that when I'm reacting, and normally when it's a negative reaction or a negative feeling inside me, my breathing. I, I, I find trouble breathing or I can feel a tightness in my chest and I know my mind stops working or doing what I'm doing. So I've been able to identify some of my triggers. Think, take an example of when you actually reacted and think about how you felt at that moment. Look around, try and introspect and figure out what was the trigger? What was it that actually brought that out to a boiling point? And then see if that can work. If that can then create that little bit of distance between the emotion that's what, what is going on inside of you or what you're feeling and reacting to and where you should be. Try it. All right. So with that, I think... Uh... I must thank each and every one of you, all the participants, I think extremely interactive. I think you all were so good at mentioning your comments, what you were feeling. Um, so thanks so much for that. We really, really appreciated your inputs. And thanks, Anal, for this absolutely engaging and enriching session. Uh, and Rajesh in the background for being thank you. my absolute partner in crime to help get this webinar up and running so thank you so much and we look forward to having you all with us on 1st of may 4 pm for our next session thank you goodbye enjoy the rest of your day